Okay then guys, I am at Exeter St David's Railway Station. First time I've ever been here and it's quite a hive of activity in my opinion. Lots of comings and goings. Anyway, I'm just waiting for a train now, a Great Western Railway train, which is going to take me down to Penzance and I'm going to be doing that in first class. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this because I've never been on that route either and there's some fantastic, iconic landmarks along the way. So please join me for this, it's going to be great. The weather is fantastic, so I'll tell you what, I'll see you again on the train. So as you can see a class 802 was my ride down to Penzance today, 802-109. I boarded the train on Coach H, uh, just to take a quick walk through Standard Class to show you what it was like. And my impression of this area was a good mix of table and airline style seating, but a bit of a plasticky feel to it, but decent enough. Luggage storage was good on the overhead racks and at the end of the carriage, which looked like it was certainly needed on this trip anyway. So I went through to coach K and headed to my allocated seat which was on the single side in the last coach, coach L. It looked like a nice seat but it was on the wrong side of the train for me and you'll see why that is in a minute. I checked with the train manager first and then reallocated myself to an available table seat in coach K on the left hand side of the train. Yes. Thank you very much. Shortly after leaving Exeter, the train skirts the estuary of the River X towards Starcross, which I think is one of the best station names out there and right on the waterfront. Have you got a favourite station name? Please let me know in the comments below. After the enchantingly named Starcross, we head towards the famous Dawlish Warren to Tynmouth stretch as the train continues to hug the coast. It almost feels as if you're travelling over the water, doesn't it? It's not only spectacular to view this from on board the train, but also from the perspective of the people on the beach and sea wall, where I reckon you must feel really close to the action. Now this section of track has been frequently damaged by storms over the years, most recently in 2014 when rough seas and high winds washed away around 40 metres of the track. It closed the line for two months. And you will note that uh, work is ongoing here to improve the seawall defences which should be completed in 2022 and that will afford more protection to the line and its trains uh, for many years to come.
but we then reached what could have been mistaken for the station with no name. But we did finally notice a name board on platform 2 and it was Newton Abbott. And significant only in that it was shortly after leaving here that I decided to take a proper look at the first class carriage. Well, the seating is laid out in a 2-1 configuration, as you can see here. And like I said before, you'd want a seat on the double side, really, for views of the coast in whichever direction you happen to be travelling in. Now, there is no anti macassar on the seat, but the headrest does have extra padding, which is nice, and it looks quite posh, in my opinion. The seats are wide, and there is good table space in the airline-style seating, as well as the normal table seats that face each other. Uh, there is a push button recline function which works and uh, power is located between the seats as you can see here. There's one conventional socket and one USB slot. Uh, going back to the seats, I like the colour scheme. It's certainly plush enough for first class on these newer class 802 trains and the ride overall was pretty quiet. The table is plenty big enough and it feels sturdy and well built. A blind is provided for the window. I prefer curtains to be honest but that's just because I'm old fashioned. Uh, blinds give better protection from the sun really at this time of the day. I do think the digital seat reservation displays for these Great Western Railway trains are extremely well done. The green lighting, or otherwise, is clearly visible from the aisle, and the seats are clearly numbered and identifiable. A Kotuk completes my review of the seat, and now let's get back to some of the views. Well, we sped towards Plymouth and basking in the sun as we arrived was the Class 43 that I'd travelled on earlier in the day uh, between Bristol and Exeter, part one of my journey. And this was its final call, but we were pressing on west, uh, travelling through the suburbs of the last large conurbation uh, before reaching our next landmark, the iconic and imposing Royal Albert Bridge, uh, which marks the boundary between Devon and Cornwall. Uh, designed by the famous Isambard Kingdom Brunel, uh, Wikipedia informs me that its unique design consists of two 138.7 meter lenticular iron trusses uh, which are 30 meters above the River Tamar below. The bridge took five years to build and was completed in 1859. Total length is 666.8 metres. As we slowly crossed, I gazed out of the window, just thinking about how many famous people and trains have made this crossing in the past. And the views from here back towards Plymouth and Plymouth Sound are simply breathtaking, especially on a day like this. Thank you. 
and once you get to the other side there's the lovely little station of Saltash and at this point you really do feel as if you're in another country. Oh, welcome to Cornwall. Right, so after passing several more stations on the way, it was time to do a quick loo review before I forgot. Um, the toilet in first class was rather small, necessitating just sliding door access with a latch lock to close. The first impressions for me were it was a bit like the sort of space you'd get in a medium sized touring caravan. Well, I did manage to rotate myself enough to show you the big mirror and baby changing table which folded down over the toilet. There was a bit of rubbish on the floor, disappointingly. Not disastrous by any means, but I did wonder if they were checked during our journey. A soap and water was provided and the hand dryer worked as expected. On exiting the toilet, I note the large space for extra luggage or bicycles, which I thought was really good because it would appear from the overhead display that you could book this space, uh, which is a major plus at busy times, especially for cyclists. And it also looks like the whole area is lockable, which gives you extra peace of mind. Have you ever used these areas? Uh, please let me know in the usual way. As we neared Penzance, it was time to review the service on offer. Well, it was okay, I guess. Um, no more than that. It was only about 10 minutes after leaving Exeter early on that um, somebody came around with a trolley. Uh, there was a small selection of snacks available. I had a cup of tea, uh, some crisps, and some lemon drizzle cake, which was nice. And I also grabbed a bottle of water. But like I said earlier, it was pretty hot on the train for most of the journey. Uh, the free trolley did make another appearance during my journey uh, for much of the same and I had a coke and some biscuits at that point. And I paid £22.30 for this journey which was around two and a half hours in length. And I think that's a good price for first class but bearing in mind most passengers would have probably paid a lot more 
I wasn't overly impressed with the catering on offer. I would expect something more substantial on a journey of this length, sandwiches at least. You know, like, like the good old days before the train companies and airlines, by the way, began using the current situation as an excuse for penny pinching. As with many of the long distance journeys I've taken over the last year or so, a nice train and a comfortable ride has been rather let down by the poor standard of food and drink available. Anyway, we were approaching Penzance by this time and I was looking forward to some nice traditional fish and chips overlooking the sea. Let's go. Okay guys, finally made it, Penzance. All the way down from Exeter St. David's, about two and a half hours that took. Not bad, first class. It was an average air service in terms of food and drink offered, nothing more than that. I would say it's probably just about worth the money uh, to travel first class as, as opposed to standard. But yeah, not bad, uh, tidy enough, coach, seats nice and comfortable great scenic journey i really enjoyed that especially the first bit and um, down past dawlish warren and onto dawlish and tinmouth and around there and i've really enjoyed it it's the first time in penzance for me so i'm gonna have a little look around now and i'll be back here in about four hours time to catch the sleeper and i'm going all the way back to london paddington on that tonight so thanks for watching this i hope to catch you on the next one and cheers for now